In this lesson, I'm going to go over how you use reference images uh, to create models. Um, sometimes that's the best way to create a model, especially if you want to be accurate and to have a true representation to concept art. So what I've done is I've just created this very quick mock-up of a table, and we're going to split that into three segments, the top, front, and side views, like I've done here. And we're going to import them into 3ds Max uh, and set up image planes so we can use them as references. So the first thing that we want to do is in 3ds Max is create three planes. So I'm going to create my first one. And I've set my uh, units of length and measurement to meters. You can also change yours to uh, customize, show um, unit setup, and use metric. Okay, meters is fine. Um, it just means that if you're ever importing this in the Unreal 4, which also uses meters, it just works out exactly the same. Um, so for my first image, I'm going to use my tabletop, and that is 860 width by 548 height. So I want to get those in here as well. So my width is 860. Now if I type 860 into this, that's going to be 860 meters. So I probably just want to go 8.60 for my width. And I will go 5.48 for my length. And then all I have to do is drag and drop that into my scene. I'm going to draw another plane. I'm going to do this for my side view. So that width for that is 5.44 and the length is 4.55. And again, just drag and drop my image on top of that. And I'm going to move this into place. Now, if I'm rotating this, I kind of want to snap it to 90 degrees. So I'm just going to turn on snap to angle. And if I use my rotate tool, it just makes it a lot easier get it into a precise angle. Then I'm going to do my table front, so another plane. And that is 8.55 width by 4.97 length, and then drag and drop my image on top of that. And again, I'm just going to get this into position. Okay, so now that's done, I'm basically going to draw a box to start off my table. I'm going to use that for my tabletop. So I'm going to draw a box. It doesn't matter about the height and length now, as long as it's relatively the same size. Uh, I'm going to use my other views okay, to get this into place. So I'm going to go into my front view, and I'm going to move this up. Press R, I'm going to scale it down, and then I'm going to scale it out. Now, if it's not working precise on both sides, I can just make this into an editable poly. Grab the vertices, and I can move those. I'm also going to go into my side view. And just make sure that is also in place. Okay, so once I've got that done, 
I'm going to go into my ribbon toolbar, which is at the top here. Again, this is context sensitive, so depending on what you've got selected here, depends on what tools are available to you in that ribbon toolbar. So I'm going to go into edge mode, um, and I'm going to just basically use the swift loop tool to kind of cut my table into four sections. Then I'm going to go to polygons. I'm going to grab three quarters of my table and delete it. Then, with my Swift tool still selected, I'm going to go into my left view and I'm going to make a line just in in line with the, the leg table. And then I'm also going to do that in my front view as well. So this is basically made a square here where I can extrude out a leg. So I'm going to grab that square and I'm going to use the sentence for extrude. I'm going to go into my side view again. I'm going to extrude that down to this point. Press OK. Extrude it again. down to this point, press OK, and this time I'm going to scale it by the middle so it's scaling uniform, so it's just following the contours of my reference image. And then again, extrude it down to the next line, extrude it down to the next line again, And this time I'm going to scale it out. And then again, use my extrude tool. Move it down. So now basically I've got one quarter of my table done. What I can do is I can use the mirror tool. So I'm just going to make sure I'm in my uh, create mode. In my mirror tool, I'm going to select that and I want to mirror it in two different ways. So I want to mirror it over this way. So if I look down the bottom left here, I can see that would be in that Y axis. And then eventually I'm going to want to mirror it this direction, okay, which is the X axis. So if I go use my mirror tool up here and I choose the Y one, I'll make sure that it has a copy selected and then that seems to work out fine. You don't have to be completely attached yet, okay, we can work on that in a second. One thing though, these are two separate objects, so to make them one, I'm going to go into my Modify tab. I'm going to use the Attach tool and select this polygon. So now they're one object. So now again, I can go into my Mirror tool. And this time, instead of Y, I'm going to do it in X and then press OK. Again, use my Attach tool, select the other ones and attach them so that they are one object. Now, as you notice, there are holes in my table and there's overlapping edges also. So what I want to do is I want to go into my vertex in my editable poly and I want to grab, first of all, my vertices that are going <coughs> across my table. And I'm going to use a tool called Weld, which is at the bottom here for me. And I'm going to click on the sentence for it. So the way this tool works is it welds vertices that are a certain distance away from each other. So at the minute, this is about three millimeters. So there's none of these points that are three millimeters away. So if I start moving this up, we should start to see our points merging together. So once these are all merged, and I'm happy with that, I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to do the same across this side of my table as well. So I'm going to grab all those vertices, go into the sentence for my weld, and that's done a okay job okay already, so I'll just press OK on that. And then I've got my basic table done. What I can do is I can start adding a, a few more details into it. So for instance, I can go into my edge mode here and double click this edge. Uh, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to hold down control and press backspace and delete it. If I do that, it means it leaves no vertices behind. 
and I'm going to do that for this here one as well. Just clean it up slightly because I really don't need those edges in there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this top face and I'm going to use my outline tool. Sorry, not my outline tool, my inset tool. Create another row of polygons around there. Now, instead of trying to go around and selecting these polygons inside here, which is kind of fiddly, I can select this main one again, click on my grow button, which will grow up by one polygon on each side, then hold down shift and deselect that big one. And then all I have to do is click on my extrude and extrude these down slightly. Just so we've added a tiny bit of detail. Underneath, I'm going to grab this polygon and I'm going to extrude that upwards. And again, that's just another tiny bit of detail underneath the table. When you're finished, you can also delete these. 